Yeah, we are on session uh, 24 today. Uh, probably, in all probability, our last session. So let's uh, let me check with you if you have any questions about what we did. Uh, uh, Rabi, you had Rabin, you had some issues, uh, questions about uh, uh, the laws we did 39, 40, 41. Rather 38, 39, 41, 38, 39, 40. No, no, I, I was reading them myself too. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm good with it. All right. All right. So let's begin, like, begin with today's session. And I thought that uh, uh, I might start up with showing you some videos uh, of these, uh, uh, these events. Give me a second and I'll open them. Yes. Law 41, there are some videos that were to be, uh, I had to show you, them to you. Uh, we saw that, uh, you know, this is uh, ball tampering was one we have already covered. We have already covered ball tampering because there are many ways that the ball is uh, tampered with. Uh, and we have to be alert to this. Now here he is uh, actually scratching at the surface of the ball. Uh, and uh, the television has caught them. Now, whether he's removing dirt or what, maybe it could be innocent, but maybe it was not. But this is what was shown on the screen, and he's probably penalized. This he should not have been doing. And Dravid's action also here was a little uh, doubtful. He seems to have applied something, maybe saliva or something, and he is polishing it. Doesn't look uh, too much like uh, tampering with the condition of the ball, but this was circulated. Uh, and here, towards the end of his actions, he seems to be peeling something off and all that. So, this was something. But one of the th things that uh, we, I used to always be alert to was uh, sometimes uh, bottles with bottle caps. If they are opened on the field of play and the staff uh, would spill them onto the playing area, two things that they are dangerous for the players themselves. And besides, those can be misused for those bottle caps can be misused for uh, changing the condition of the ball. Uh, that has happened and uh, can be done. So we ought to be alert to these things. And here uh, there is. Uh, We have our uh, our friend uh, Virat Kohli doing something. Hey, hey you yeah. can't do that. Play <laughs> yourself in. <laughs> just, just not something. He just is just not supposed to do. It is a new ball, which has been taken, and this guy picks it up and uh, uh, starts uh, uh, testing the ball. All right, uh, he is not supposed to be doing that. Look at this action of uh, Jadeja. This was penalized. Uh, he has taken something from uh, the bowler, the fielder there, applied it to one finger, transferred it to his bowling finger, the spinning finger, and this was spotted and uh, reported to the match referee. And this was deemed he was charged with a level one offense, which he pleaded guilty to. Now, the important thing is here, and I would want to show you this action goes on for quite some time and very close to the umpire. Fucking and uh, uh, the umpire seems to be oblivious to it. All right, he had other duties to attend to in front of him. But uh, like I mentioned to you, the umpire should always be alert. Uh, always be alert to such action. And one of the things you must try and do is keep the bowler in view. It is the bowler who sometimes does it. Uh, uh, keep watching the bowler. Whoever has the ball, keep watching that person. That is what I would recommend. Because this happened over a long time, uh, the bowler, it is all easy not to notice, but it is, uh, you must take care to see that it is, uh, you keep your eyes on the uh, bowler. Now, somebody asked me, Shetab, I think, asked me a question about uh, something like this, uh, shadow of the fielder. Now, you can't take the sun away and you can take the fielder back to a limited extent, but uh, the accepted practice in such a situation is, that you will tell the bowler, the fielder whose shadow is coming on the pitch to remain still while the ball is being delivered and while it is being played. He has to remain still. If he doesn't remain still, 
immediately it is dead ball and the ball will not count in the over and if he does it repeatedly you can even conclude that he is doing it deliberately in which case 41.4 can apply 41 but in itself it is not uh, you cannot ask the uh, in this where the shadows are so long uh you would be radically changing the field he will have to stand somewhere at uh, halfway down to cover in order to avoid this so we don't want to put him at a disadvantage similarly we also don't want the fielder the batter to be put at disadvantage now this is fielder uh, there are many grounds where the pillars or the uh, shadows of trees come onto the pitch towards evening late evening you can't do anything about it uh what is most difficult i have found is half the pitch is in shadow and the half the pitch is in bright sunshine so sometimes the ball can disappear from sight even from yours as a uh, um, as an umpire and even as a as a batter it can disappear from sight when it is coming from sunshine and going into shade but you can't do anything about it you can't do anything about it here we have i also have some incidents of uh, uh bowler obstructing the non striker here have a look at this now this was something which uh, if you look at the film i hope i have the film uh, this is a bangladeshi uh, fielder a girl she backed up so much the ball is being thrown from this in from this direction and she is backed up so much and uh, actually has blocked the runner the australian runner and she couldn't make good her ground just because of this blockage now the umpire judge viewing it the umpire judge that it was not deliberate and therefore she was not penalized i had a video of this also uh, i think this is it it was judged as not uh, deliberate and not penalized and they never reviewed it now look at the action very very ambiguous action it could go either way but it was uh, see look at this look at this look at this <laughs> now and the field been given out the umpire judged that this was not deliberate and uh, she had to go and uh, no a fit a fit uh, case for withdrawing the field but then they did not do it we came back for the extra ball the action looks very very ambiguous but then the umpire is the judge best best just for that sir and, can you please play one more time uh, really? this video pardon sir can you please play this video one more time Yeah, yeah, sure. Have you seen this video before? No, sir. No, sir. That's why I have asked. Okay, okay. Everyone moves around, but now everything has to go back to the way it was. So final ball, this one. He is actually running into the north side <laughs> and blocking it. See something on a cricket field? Don't think I've seen that one. Crow coming in, thinking about the second run. Direct. So this is how sometimes the uh, situation can be a little of uh, difficult. Now uh, this is again obstruction of the batter here. Now this guy was obstructed twice, if you see. one here by the non striker one here by the other fielder who has come in and uh, he was out run out he was obstructed here also twice he was obstructed the appeal wasn't withdrawn and because uh, this was not deliberate it was not penalized and what is not deliberate is just part of the game and you cannot sit in judgment and say that the batter should not be given out now this was uh, quite a uh, an odd case where two obstructions took place two accidental obstructions and the the result of both of these was uh, again in my view a fit case for uh, withdrawing uh, the appeal but it wasn't done and then we have to live with it there is nothing that we can do about it now look at this uh, aspect of deceptive fielding uh, one was kohli's fake fielding look at him at point Look at him. Look at what he does at point. The ball, ball is nowhere near him. And here, the ball is not in his hand, and he uh, pretends to uh, throw the ball at the bowler end. 
what he sought to achieve uh, by that god alone knows but this was something which was perhaps not spotted uh, by the empires uh, or or they decided that it is of no consequence and in such cases i believe that the third empire should also be proactive but i suppose he was not and uh, this went by and there was a lot of complaints from the pakistani side was it pakistan or was it bangladesh they felt that they should have got a fire and penalty here very very ambiguous action and uh, it could uh, what do you say would you have given a fire and penalty for this yes sir yes, it was a case the... of mock field mock field it was a case of mock field so according to you uh, according to you it should be a case of uh, fire penalty run okay of course definitely say yes sir all right because the law is there sometimes the situation can be the action can be a little ambiguous so no uh, problem if sometimes you differ with other umpires or other umpires differ with you because judging the situation can be a little dicey at times and can be a little dicey at times all right now we have one uh, uh, kohli i showed you here this is deception of the field now look the at ball this ball his ninth over early. up all steps the ball pace or two down and he but the fencing going on by the fielder didn't hand. quite work nearly well and he fence to throw maybe next time he'll actually hold the, the ball but has seen it it is in front of so his eyes but he's not Matt very sure further down at the ball is talking to the third umpire strike. and he is uh, consulting perhaps his colleague because your west australian side uh your state side gets underway this afternoon at the start of their JLT cup match playing over in the wacker yeah i think they start 1:30 Perth time um, against New South Wales. Um, so hopefully they can get off to a winning start today. Umpires just come together for a chat. Not quite sure what it's about. Five runs to the one short. No, the commentators didn't know what this was. One short. <laughs> only one run taken in one shot now there are a few things here that uh, i, I think like it's a um, fake fielding yeah, uh, the uh, action was very very clear the action was very clear of uh, uh, willful uh, willfully trying to deceive the batsman it was very clear i do not know why it required consultation or referring to the third umpire uh, but then that is now the trend you go into a huddle with your uh, uh, partner and then uh, uh you take a joint decision it is actually uh, all right it's, uh, if your circumstances are ambiguous sometimes you can do it or things are not clear if he is in a better position to judge but then they did it now uh, another thing that here yeah, should that off. should have happened look He's at the where, what the is the position strike. when he does it look at the position of the two batters when uh, thing going on by the fielder didn't quite action. work ball his ninth over yeah Apple steps a pace or two down. The two batters have not yet crossed. Bit of foxing going on by the fielder. It didn't quite work. Nearly worked. So it is all right that six runs should be given. Even the uncrossed run will not be given. Even the uncrossed 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 run will not be given in this case. Like I told you that uh, normally runs crossed are given at the time of obstruction and all that. here even the under cross run will not be given but what the umpire should have done was should have done here was uh ask the two batters at the crease which of you is going to take strike you decide on that they have let that position remain uh the umpire omitted it or did not was not aware that this is required to be done or Uh, and of course perhaps the batters also did not know that it is within their right to decide now which it could very well have this non striker or the striker himself wanting to take strike perhaps the uh, stronger batsman all right so this is something one is that consultation bit and the other is that uh, matter about the matter about uh, asking him where you are going to stand where who will take strike is something which is necessary these are two unique features of the law one this particular law that even the uncrossed run is allowed they went on and finished it is all right but at that instant it was uncrossed that run will be allowed that run will be allowed and then these two batters have to be have to decide who is going to take the next strike 
and the position uh, of the two batters at that time should have been frozen at the time of the incident and frozen at that time so non striker remains at the non striker then now you ask them who is going to take strike please let us know so there you give them the right all right uh this is how the law is and then we have got i got one more thing here uh look at this obstruction of the batter it's fernando and he comes once again they didn't for granted runs for a quick single and there's a barge actually from fernando who just knocks david milan down onto the ground balls just dropped at johnny bestow's feet milan's come through for the single and he's just been barged out of the way that's an ice like, hockey style it is. like shoulder check from Benaro Fernando. I don't know if they play a lot of ice hockey in Sri Lanka. I don't know if they get the weather for it already. I would have seriously considered this to be uh, definitely deliberate and I would uh, seriously I would consider this to be a candidate for applying law 42 which we will do today that violence of any kind where there is bodily contact. Uh, he went in too bodily uh, too violently into the batter. and which would be a fit case when we look at law 42 you'll see that you might consider law 42 also the law also tells us 41.5 tells us that in such situations where there is physical contact obstruction may be without physical contact but where there is physical contact you must keep in mind that you have got also law 42 to apply where he can get suspended for 10 overs where he can get suspended for 10 overs remember that the law uh, gives you a reminder there all right okay now uh, here we what we have got is obstruction run out yes these are the, the videos that i have got for you uh, on these uh, topics all right now let us go on with law uh, 41.6 particularly i wanted to emphasize uh, once again uh, a lot of you uh, would be umpiring in uh, uh, local cricket uh, i want you to check your uh, under pcs playing conditions uh, check your pcs uh, whether your pcs tell you that you should be applying 41.6 from the laws along with you all in your uh, wherever you are umpiring uh, you must be following the rule uh, one above the shoulder or two above the shoulder is permitted and all that and the third one is the no ball where the no ball is given like this and uh, a distinctive signal given to them please check in your uh, law book in your pcs now i have here the icc pc i have not brought here i have got here the uh, bcci pcs and this has been uh, right from the beginning uh, right from the beginning we have been applying these rule laws right from the beginning i gave you that example of uh, punjab versus uh, services long years ago now look at what 41.6.2 says a bowler shall be limited to two fast pitch uh, short pitch deliveries per over all right and then of course they say that if he bowls one you will advise him then if he bowls a second you will uh, then uh, 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 no ball him or is it if two are allowed then you will tell him this is the second and if he uh, more than two if he bowls then you will no ball him and uh, you will no ball him and a differential signal is to be used is what the law say once he bowls a third fast short pitch ball the umpire after the call of no ball and when the ball is there shall caution the bowler give a caution and the second time he does it that this is he will give him a final warning and then third time he does it now this is under 41.6.2 all right this is one set of procedures a ball going above the shoulder what does the playing condition here says 41.6.1 bowling of dangerous and unfair short pitch deliveries this has been reproduced from the law and it says notwithstanding clause 416.2 even though you have 41.6.2 to operate and use besides that whatever may be stated there you still have to look at uh, and uh, prevent dangerous bowling and acts here here that other uh, procedure is also given simultaneously both will apply i told showed you how i applied it in ranji trophy first class game in uh, india and how i applied it and how it is to be applied not a single ball went over the shoulder of the batter 
and he is removed from bowling he can be removed from bowling because this law says if he is bowling dangerously at the batter it doesn't have to be uh, where it doesn't have to be part of that balls are all finishing say at his chest at the batter's chest not one is above the shoulder not once have you have uh, have you told the bowler that this is one or this is two or this is that is a separate procedure altogether separate procedure altogether notwithstanding that you have been given that law and you have been given this so check your pcs uh, shubhada this is from the bcci pcs and there is no doubt about it that both apply and without a single ball going over the shoulder the bowler can still be removed from bowling for dangerous bowling for this, dangerous this, bowling. this was the one na you, you like Pardon? you want to Haan, शोल्डर इज द लिमिट बट चेक वेदर दिस इज ऑल्सो एप्लीकेबल check in your uh, pcs whether this is also applicable then in that case you have to simultaneously apply both and i told you how you can apply it all right and then going on to 41.7 uh, dangerous and unfair uh, any ball which is above the waist height waist being uh, as described the belt level uh, here in this picture you will see that the law makers have defined the uh, above the waist at this level where is uh, normal uh, above the waist would be around 4 inches higher but here it is the law says that uh, waist is where he normally ties his uh, belt that belt so if the ball is above that any ball which is above that is unfair any ball which is above that is unfair and will be called no ball this is as per the law this is as per uh, playing conditions also bcci and icc playing condition they have merely reproduced they have not made any change in this law they have not altered it has to be no ball every ball wherever it is going but it is the dangerous one it is the dangerous one which has to be acted against something which is directly at the body full pitch ball at the body immediately i have no ball and issue a caution immediately i uh, no ball and issue a caution and the second time he does it in that innings it is he is removed from bowling but uh, the non dangerous one the wayward one he can bowl any number that he wants which are not causing likely to cause injury to me which is going the wicket keeper is catching it here the wicket keeper is catching it here on the leg side all of that those will all be no ball merely no ball they are unfair therefore merely no ball even the first one but when it comes when it dangerous directed at my body above the waist and directed at my body i will have to start taking action because there i consider it dangerous so the unfair and dangerous is uh, are the two things which are given there in the law all right uh, deliberate bowling of short uh, full pitch balls and deliberate front foot no balls i told you are uh, not allowed because they are uh, de definitely likely to cause injury and there will be always be a background to it there is some bad blood between the two teams and the bowlers uh, sometimes then they uh, with a rush of blood they resort to this kind of bowling and there have been occasions where the bowler is immediately removed on deliberately bowling a fast full job i think it has happened in an odi david shepherd was the bowler umpire i think and uh, was it bradley or wakar yunus was removed i don't recall who but he was removed from the bowling all right for deliberately bowling a fast full pitch and deliberately bowling a fast full will have almost always a background for which you have to be alert to you have to be alert to that kind of thing uh, it is it doesn't happen uh, out of the blue for no reason at all because there must have been a background to it now uh, talking about uh, we all know what is the protected area i have a picture of it the protected area because here uh, we are talking about damage to the pitch excuse me sir yes yes boliye uh, sir 
जो वेस्टेड हेड की नो बॉल है सर द पॉइंट एट द पॉइंट बैटर हेलो हेलो सर आई एम ऑडिबल यस यस सेल बी सेल बी गो अहेड यस सर सपोज जो वेस्ट हेड की सर नो बॉल है एंड वी नो कि एज अ मैं स्ट्राइकर से एंड अंपायर पे हूं अंपायरिंग कर रहा हूं एंड वो नो बॉल है हां हां लाइक जो सारी कंडीशन फुलफिल हो रही नो बॉल की बट सपोज बैट्समैन ने लीव कर दी या मिस हो गई एंड वो स्टंप पे लग गई राइट बैट्समैन ने क्या बैट्समैन से मिस हो गया शॉट उसने हिट किया या छोड़ दी वो स्टंप्स को लग गई जाके राइट स्टंप को लग गई स्टंप को लग गई हां स्टंप्स को लगी एंड इट विल बी अ नो बॉल बट पीपल लाइक लोगों का ऐसा कहना है कि स्टंप पे लगी नो बॉल कैसे हो सकती है सो इन दैट केस वी हैव टू नो बॉल उससे कुछ लेना देना नहीं है ना बोल्ड हो गया बोल्ड अलाउड नहीं है नो बॉल नो बॉल भी स्टंप को लग सकती है ना राइट सर राइट सर वही मैं कह रहा था कि पीपल हैव ओपिनियन कि वो नो बॉल नहीं होती स्टंप पे लग गई सो वी हैव टू जज फ्रॉम द प्रॉपिंग रीज राइट ना सर Yes, yes. You have to look at the crease and uh, no ball. No ball finished. But and see, the purpose of no ball is uh, you have taken an undue, unfair advantage over the batting side. Ab no ball kyun call karte hain? If you look at all the no balls, are all uh, regulation to uh, nullify the unfair advantage that the fielding side gains by those violations, by encroaching on the pitch or having more than uh, two behind the popping crease. or wicket keeper encroaching he has gained an advantage call no ball when you call no ball all the five or six uh, five or six decisions where the bowler gets credit are cancelled only two remain obstructing the field and uh, handle the ball uh, obstructing the field and hit the ball twice only these two remain otherwise they are all uh, are removed and run out of course run out otherwise they are all gone you can't uh, so including bold the purpose of no ball is that and in the more serious offenses it is uh, called always called dead ball in the serious offenses all right now this is uh, the protected area we used to call it at our during our time it was the danger area now this is this starts 5 feet in front of the popping crease 5 feet in front of the popping crease and one foot on either side it is one foot on either side so it is basically 48 by 2 the protected area uh, a batter can is free to come here and or take guard here and all that there is no problem and naturally this is an area where he will move but he is not supposed to move into this area unless he has a reason for it we will deal with that particular law but remember this is the protected area which the umpire is always supposed to protect he should always be protecting the uh, pitch uh, generally but this is an area when a bowler comes into this the protected area uh, he is immediately uh, given a caution if he when when on uh, after his uh, deliver after delivering the ball or even without delivering the ball in a trial run he comes here and comes into this area he will be given a caution immediately will be given a caution immediately all right Uh, uh, we will look at what the provisions are about uh, this is the protected area and uh, at one time this protected area used to be 4 feet 4 feet and i know for sure that uh, though i agree with it i, I know for sure who was mainly responsible for uh, uh, changing this to from 4 to 5 feet because i remember the time when kapil also spoke, spoke to me how aapko nahi lagta ye 4 foot nahi 5 foot hona chahiye हमारे जैसे बॉलर हैं बॉलर लाइक अस हुआ टॉल एंड ऑल दैट एंड देयर आर मेनी बिगर बॉलर देन कपिल देव एंड देन द लॉ मेकर्स इट सीम दे मस्ट हैव बीन अ लॉट ऑफ लॉबिंग विद द बीसीसी एंड द लॉ मेकर्स एंड देन द लॉ मेकर्स एट वन स्टेज अग्रीड टू चेंज दिस फ्रॉम 4 फीट टू 5 फीट व्हिच इज परहैप्स ऑल टू द गुड नथिंग रॉन्ग इन इट बट आई हैपेन टू नो द बैकग्राउंड ही वाज अ वेरी a very uh, strong proponent of this idea increasing it because otherwise you would be called uh, uh, stop from bowling and believe me kapil dev sharma chetan sharma were regular offender uh, in this i umpired only two matches where kapil played one was my first one day international which was india versus england but he bowled from the other end ramaswamy's end 
and uh, there was no chance of me to say anything do anything but i come down strongly on bowler coming onto the pitch uh, and uh, in fact in that match uh, one english bowler i called him one warning for uh, running on the pitch and there naturally you can't hear anything i told you so i turned around to him and gooch was behind me here he said one warning for running on the pitch i told him we received one warning he said what for for running on the pitch so he said this and finish and uh, in uh, another game india versus uh, new zealand india versus new zealand uh, simon doll very tall fellow size 12 boots first ball he bowled of the match early morning 9:30 am first ball he bowled of the match he was close he was somewhere here close very tall fellow he was somewhere close to this box and just uh, i am very quiet in my issuing instructions no dramatic so when he was passing by i told him you very close to that box there he said this uh, they appreciate being told and uh, next ball he bowled a no ball he bowled a no ball about 4 inches outside and bang his foot came here bang in the middle here his foot came and second ball of the odi i issued a warning to him Uh, one warning for uh, uh, coming on to the protected area first second ball of an odi and i know had it been the first uh, ball also i would have delivered that uh, caution to him because if he has made an offense my my uh, road ahead is clear i have to issue him a caution it doesn't matter there is nothing like i have to tell him in advance or give him a friendly warning uh, ken rutherford was here at midon short midon You know, it's only the first, uh, second ball of the match. Uh, you have to give him a friendly warning. I said, look, I am friendly even now, but uh, if you did not see, I did speak to him that he was close. But regardless of that, uh, I am still friendly. But this is official. He has taken one warning, so I am telling you that. He didn't like it. End of the over, he sort of snatched my cap, uh, snatched his bowler's cap from my hand. He didn't like it, but then he couldn't do anything about it. But remember. many umpires feel that uh, there is a need to inform bowlers about his coming on to the danger area all right you be helpful like i was i told him he was close to it but if he was actually there inside then what i have to do is very very plain in the laws i may help him by guiding him stay away from this area all right but if he is actually in it even the first ball of the match i have to take action and the action is very clear it should be a caution it should be a caution so first ball second ball doesn't make a difference all right now uh, coming here the protected area now we see the various uh, different people who uh, damage the pitch who are likely to uh, the fielding side damaging the pitch what is it is unfair to cause deliberate or avoidable damage to the pitch see the terms which are used it should not be accidental it should be deliberate if somebody accidentally comes on uh, you will not penalize him and avoidable damage sometimes there is unavoidable damage to the pitch a fielder may cause he goes to take a catch on the in the middle it is gone up and is they come there to uh, field the ball catch the ball or he is uh, dived at a ball uh, say from silly point or wherever and uh, he happens to scratch the pitch that is unavoidable you can't do anything about it and you can't penalize him for that you simply cannot he is actually caused damage to the pitch not that uh, something that you deem to have caused damage but he is actually caused damage there is a nail mark there on the pitch but you can't penalize him because it was not deliberate and it was uh, not avoidable damage now a fielder now here this is deemed deemed the damage is that if you are on the ground on the pitch area without reasonable cause that means you are causing damage to the pitch avoidable damage to the pitch you have no business to be there if you have business to be there i will excuse you but if you have no business to be there i will penalize you you got no business then then the law says you will look at his presence on the pitch as causing damage to the pitch where even there there is a no scratch but he uh, the, this is what the law guides us and tells us 
Now, if a fielder causes avoidable damage to the pitch, except under 41.13.1, which we will see at the first instance, uh, this is 41.13.1 means as a bowler, because a fielder is also a bowler. Bowler is also a fielder. So, that is excluded. Uh, bowler is excluded. There are special regulations for the bowler. Circumstances are different. And the offense is also different. The umpire seeing the contravention, whichever umpire may see the contravention, when the ball is dead, he will inform the other umpire. Look, I think he's damaged the fielder came on. I think he's damaged the pitch. Then after that, the bowlers and umpire will take up. Here it is either umpire. The bowlers umpire and umpire will take up the ceremonial part of signaling no ball and when to the scorer, caution, cautioning the captain of the fielding side, the first and final warning, <clears throat> informing the batter. I have to tell the batters he's been issued one. Like if I penalize the fielder, one warning has been given to the fielder for damaging the pitch. I have to tell him, never be wrong on procedure. Now, if in that inning there is any further instance so by any fielder, <clears throat> this is a team offense. Any fielder makes an offense, not that particular fielder. Any fielder repeats this offense in that inning. At the end of the inning, the warnings will wash off. They come with a clean slate. The umpire seeing the same thing, the umpire seeing the contravention. And here in the second offense, it is award five penalty runs to the batting side. One plus one is the, the way I stated. One fine, first and final warning, and the second time it is action. And every repeat, of course, is five penalty runs. Then the procedure of informing, informing the batter and captain of the batting side at the nearest interval, and the umpires together will report. So remember that the nature of the offense is that it is causing deliberate and avoidable damage to the pitch. Unavoidable damage and non-deliberate damage, you cannot do anything about. You will not punish that particular fielder. You might tell him, what if this you have done or warn him, tell him to keep off. But uh, nothing beyond that. You can't take action. I'll come back to bowler in a minute. Batter damaging the pitch, there are parallels in the sense that it is a two-step action against one warning and then five penalty runs and also disallowance of runs. We have seen umpires, uh, when it happens, you issue a warning to him that if the striker enters the protected area, again, it is unfair, the rule is the same. It is unfair to cause deliberate or avoidable damage to the pitch. What applies to the fielder applies also to the batter. If the striker enters the protected area in playing or playing at the ball, he must move immediately thereafter. That means this law also says, for playing at the ball, he is allowed to come into the protected area. You can, cannot force him to keep out of the protected area and uh, uh, try and play a ball which is fits in the right in the middle on middle thumb. He is allowed to go there and play it. The striker is allowed to go there and play it. You cannot penalize him. But after having done it, he should immediately go. Immediately go out. And uh, if he doesn't do it, then it is uh, avoid, he's causing damage. But otherwise, a striker can go on to the uh, protected area to play a ball. That is what this law says. A batter will be deemed to be causing avoidable damage if either umpire considers that his or her presence on the field, on the pitch, is without reasonable cause. Without reasonable cause. Okay? The same thing principle that applies to uh, the fielder, same principle applies. But here there is a slight difference where the if either batter causes it in a second time, then the umpire seeing the contravention, when the ball is dead, and he will not call dead ball, he will wait for th things to happen, finish. You have noted that he is damaging the pitch. He will warn both batters this is unfair. And in the first case, first and final warning in the first case, this is uh, shall apply throughout the innings. Okay, and the umpire has to so inform each incoming batter. <clears throat> when the new batter comes in, whenever the batter retires or a uh, batter is out, the new man, you will call him here, even before giving guard. You have to tell him there is one warning for damaging the pitch standing against your team. If you do it, it will be your second. Tell him, never, never be wrong on procedure. Never be wrong on procedure is what I keep telling you. Uh, always be correct as far as procedure is concerned. Uh, when you impose a fire and penalty or dis, uh, 
don't uh, inform uh, please uh, that don't give anybody an excuse <clears throat> to accuse you of being wrong in procedure never do that okay one warning is issued this warning applies throughout the innings to the whole side inform the captain of the fielding side and the captain of the batting side of what has occurred whenever you can. batting side we might be inside so later on you can inform when there is deliberate or avoidable damage to a batter by and the second time the same procedure will follow but here in addition remember you will disallow all runs to the batting side this is an additional in addition to the five run penalties awarded to the fielding side you will uh, disallow all runs to the field, uh, batting side this is an we have seen two or three occasions we have seen that happening and return any not out batter to his or her original line again suppose in that running he is out run out the striker is out run out at the striker's end uh, non striker's end so the not out batter will be called back non striker will be called back and the new batter will take strike at the striker's end though the wicket fell at the non striker's end the new batter will take strike at the striker's end all right uh, remember this and you will award any other fire run penalty to either side that is act applicable except penalty for 28.3 in all course cases of disallowance of runs 28.3 disappear and all other penalties being of the nature of punishment for illegal actions they will never disappear they will never we know for law 42.17 they will never disappear even if the match is uh, even if the match is concluded you still have to award the penalty and make the report so this is the nature of these two laws they are much similarity in the case of batter uh, the idea is that uh, all runs will be disallowed uh, and the we will uh, the five penalty runs will be Uh, given to the fielding side now coming to the bowler bowler running on the protected area it is unfair for the bowler to enter the protected area in his follow through he cannot enter that area causing avoidable damage and all that deliberate damage all that is apart his offense is simpler you cannot come there you cannot come there simply cannot come there without reasonable cause whether or not the ball is delivered like i told you he fails to deliver the ball you call dead ball but even then he has come on to the pitch on his follow through one he takes one warning whether or not he delivers the ball now uh, without reasonable cause again like i told you that the bowler is also fielder he will not go away many bowlers tend to follow the uh, ball and if the ball is held straight he will uh, go on to the pitch and uh, try to feel the ball in trying to feel the ball which is reasonable cause for him to enter the area he has his spikes have caused the mark also even though it has not caused the mark he finds himself in the uh, protected area you cannot penalize him you cannot uh, one thing uh, he cannot come on without reasonable cause so reasonable cause will be generally taking a catch or feeling the ball so there is no uh, issue with uh, you can't stop him from doing that remember that now in the case of a bowler uh, it is a three step offense it is a three step offense this is the only one which is a three step offense we have seen so many where you uh, give a fire and penalty immediately first offense the more serious one then we have things like uh, fielder uh, or batter damaging the pitch it is 1 plus 1 uh law 26 it is 1 plus 1 one caution will be given and one fire and penalty will be given in the case of uh, tampering with the ball no fire and penalty immediately a fire and penalty no warning no caution nothing but this is the only case where it is a three step operation you will give a caution you will give a first and final warning on the second offense during the inning and third at the third time you will remove the there is no fire and penalty here you will remove the bowler from you will remove the bowler from bowling throughout the innings for that innings he will be gone remember one more thing if you see there is a pattern all actions against the bowler uh, culminate in 
the bowler being removed from bowling not fire on penalty he is removed from the bowling all bowlers for whatever offenses they may make even this uh, they are removed otherwise all other things fielding side batting side there are fire on penalties involved and this is unique in the sense that it says it is a three step operation 1 2 3 this is the only one which is 1 2 3 and you direct the fielding side to suspend the bowler immediately from bowling in that innings if it is in the middle of the over that you have sent him off then uh, another bowler has to complete it we know the rules about it then the procedure of informing other umpire for his reason action inform the batters or the batting side captain at the nearest interval and then to make a report and in all cases of course the first person to be uh, pulled up will be the captain will be the cop the procedure is more or less common for all the informing and uh, and uh, the report okay now there is one special provision which has uh, come to be uh, it was not there during our time and this is because uh, the trend is now when we used to play i used to be a batter uh, and a bowler and uh, generally my stance was one foot inside and one foot outside the popping crease that was my general stance and very rarely very rarely for some bowler i might stand uh, up to 4 6 inches outside up to 4 very rarely i would be uncomfortable doing that but uh, once in a while i have done that 4 to 6 inches nowadays batters stand uh, mark their guard up to 2 inches 2 uh, feet uh, outside the popping crease and stand there and stand there and play the ball now having done that now they the laws don't say where you can mark your guard or how much but they make it give a general description that if you are likely to come into the protected area while playing at the ball that frequent encroachment is inevitable you have to stop it you have to stop it you can take preventive action also you don't have to wait till the law provides for preventive action also i'll tell you how but uh, when it comes to umpiring and teamwork between two uh, two umpires it is a good idea for your colleague to tell you at square leg that look this fellow is arrange with him that you i'll do it for you and you do it for me that how much forward the striker is taking his stance that is one thing that uh, is both being aware and the second thing is uh, it also helps you as the bowlers and umpire to judge uh, the height of the ball and whether lbw decisions and all that because the farther the ball has to travel after impact the less are the chances of an lbw as if the ball is deviating this way or this way and it has come and hit him and if he was in uh, within his popping crease uh, chances would be greater back foot it would be even greater and front foot and way out on his front foot uh, the chances would reduce the more forward he would go if you take a graph paper and draw a spot of for the ball landing and take an angle for the ball hitting the uh, striker uh, on his pad you will see that a very small deviation can carry the ball outside you will see a very small deviation can also so therefore uh learn these things how to judge an lbw is very important i told you that the most important part of an lbw decision is judging whether or not the ball would have gone to gone on to hit the wicket and if you are not sound on that you will have trouble with your decisions on lbw all the time all the time so therefore i urge you to do practice i told you how you can do practice for lbw decisions have a mentor uh, join you for about an uh, half an hour or so and have a bowlers bowl uh, some deliveries at you i have a camera at the back and you record what your decision was whether the ball is going to the stumps missing by 4 inches missing like some by 4 inches going above the bales and let your mentor and you look at the footage and he can help you doing that but this is one area where you should very very be very keen to improve very keen to improve many experienced umpires make a mistake on this particular aspect i told you of an uh, of an umpire from india very good i he i have seen him give some very good bad bad decisions very very fine bad bad decisions 
I could have made a mistake myself. But I found him that the ball which is going on the leg stump and dipping like this, he would give that. He would give that. I have seen at least two or three instances. So I am surprised that he was not sound on it after having reached that level. He was not sound of it. And he was also a player umpire. Uh, player umpires are uh, supposed to be better in these judgments, but he was not. He definitely was not. So therefore, you have to work at it. You have to work at it. So that is the what. And then coming into the protected area. Now looking at this law, the striker shall not adopt a batting position or guard in the protected area. He can't take a guard in the protected area, or so close to it that uh, frequent encroachment is inevitable. The striker may mark a guard on the pitch. They don't say inside the crease or on the popping crease. We used to mark it on the popping crease. Provided that no mark is unreasonably close to the protected area. In a test match, India versus England, the two umpires had stopped uh, Rishabh Pant when he took his guard very, very, very much forward. He took a guard position there. He was actually stopped. There was an incident where he was actually stopped from doing it. And uh, at that time, uh, I recall Sunil Gavaskar said that uh, on, on air that why he can mark his guard, guard anywhere on the pitch, which was not correct. Sunil was not up to date on this particular development, which is not correct. He said it, I sent him a message. Look, you were wrong there. And uh, it, it is not right. Okay. So uh, remember that the striker may mark a guard provided it is not under him. And, uh, at the same time, at the same time, uh, I observe that one of the England batsmen, uh, opening batsman, I think left-hander he was, uh, I don't remember his name, I, he's not played too much, that series he played, he had a very long spike mark, about a foot and a half, that long, about a foot and a half or long, uh, much outside the, uh, it was nearly two feet, much outside the popping crease. I don't know how they allowed it. Uh, I hope I, I don't know if I can get a picture of that. But it was looked very, very bad. Very, very bad. I do not know if it can be treated as damaging the pitch. It was that long. All right. Now, if there is the law says that if there is a breach, when you see that he striker is too much in forward, and if the bowler has not delivered, uh, entered his delivery, he's on his run up also. The umpire seeing this normally, usually it will be the square leg umpire. It's a dead ball. So this is, he is taking preventive action here. This law has a preventive aspect to it. Before the ball, ball, over, uh, ball is delivered, he will call dead ball. Otherwise, if he has not entered his delivery side, then he has to wait till the ball becomes dead. And then you have to inform. So the penalty can be both ways, even when he has prevented it from happening and even when it has uh, happened later on. Uh, he need not have, uh, it is, he need not have gone on to the, the danger area at all. He is likely to go there. So that is the nature of the offense. He shall wait until the ball is dead and then inform the other umpire of the, that he has marked his guard so far ahead. He might not have gone into the protected area. Okay. The bowlers and umpire, they will take up the proceeding and warn the striker it is unfair and this is a first and final warning. Again, this is one plus one. He will inform the non-striker each incoming batter. All bat, uh, batting side offenses uh, are always inform the incoming batter. Inform the captain of the fielding side practicable. If there is a further breach of any of the conditions of 41.15, by any batter, it is a team warning. It is a team warning. The umpire seeing the contravention shall, if the bowler has not entered, the same thing applies. If he is not, he will call dead ball immediately. Otherwise, once he has entered the delivery side, you are not supposed to call dead ball. Let the matters run as they will and uh, then wait till the ball is dead. After that, you take action. Again, this is a fire run penalty action to the fielding side and he will disallow all runs to the batting side. Disallow all runs to the batting side. The consequences are that return not out batter to the crease uh, and award any other fire run penalty except 28.3. 28.3 will always disappear. If the ball has gone and hit the helmet, that penalty cannot be given. 
but uh, if at the same time the fielder is responsible for damaging the pitch then the batting side will get five penalty run for that so all penalties other than 28.3 must be given or if that ball is fielded illegally by the uh, fielder that penalty will come to the batting side it's like that all right one fire run penalty to the batting side one to the fielding side that is how it will be a 28.3 will disappear i hope you appreciate and understand the principle why 28.3 disappear okay after that the procedure of informing and the reporting by the which is a standard process and again i must emphasize that the captain is roped in first because of his responsibility to uh, to ensuring now this 41.16 has been taken away from this law and has been put in 38.3 uh, it is appears in red and striped struck through because uh, i am giving you amendments uh, which are made by the third edition and then we have we have discussed this in detail and we have the act of batters uh, stealing a run now what is what has happened is over the years over the years uh this has been a problem where the law makers have never never uh dealt with this properly this is for decades i am talking about at least four decades from the from 1947 maybe six decades see there are there are many questions here earlier what used to happen was it is unfair for batters to attempt to run steal a run during the bowler run up and now with t20 and all that uh, we might have seen this incident also in our lifetime i have never seen it or heard of it but maybe it has happened in the past that the bowler is running up from a long run up and the two batters cross over for a single because the, what the definition of the run is that at any time during the while the ball is in play if the two uh, batters run and make good their ground from end to end that run will count that is the definition of a run so it must have been attempted not i have never seen or heard of it any record of it but it must have been done therefore there was a law and the law said for years decades that if that happens he can throw at the non striker the striker's wicket and break the wicket and get a run out but there were many attached questions suppose in running he plays the ball is he out obstructing the field suppose he misses and the ball goes for run whether you will allow those runs all of these questions had no answer and though in the run up to these amendments i had a discussion with them uh, and i gave my suggestions what you should do in the scenario that you should uh, call no ball the same scenario but the law makers now say we don't want all this gender we do not want all these problems at all which for which actually they had no answers for you know, five to six decades they simply said made an amendment to the rule uh, if the bowler throws the ball at the opposite end bowler's end it is dead ball before his run up if he throws it before coming to into his delivery side if he does it it is a throw to run out the striker it is dead ball we have seen it uh, in the, the dead ball law we have seen it we have seen it that it has been brought out in law 21 it has been struck out of law 21 no ball and has now been put in dead ball he will do that the law maker say we don't want it suppose he doesn't throw the ball to either end see they are running they are running unless the bowler attempts to run out the non striker he is allowed to run out the non striker you will not call dead ball non striker he is allowed to run out you are referred to 38.3 he is allowed to run out uh, the non striker but if he uh, throws at the but if there he doesn't make a throw anywhere he is taken a back he doesn't throw make a throw anywhere as soon as the two batters cross the umpire is to call dead ball and award five penalty runs to the fielding side this is the change they have made the law makers say now in the uh, 1st october 2022 they say we don't want all these uh, funny incidents what will happen what will not happen we are not concerned with it and uh, you will uh, as soon as they cross you will call 
award five penalty is called dead ball at this stage and award five penalty runs to the other side but if the bowler throws at the striker's wicket before entering his delivery side which is lot 20 a uh, lot 20 you are supposed to call dead ball so they have entirely avoided this problem entirely avoided if he can wants to run out the non striker is allowed to do it he cannot throw at the opposite end if he does that it is dead ball now he doesn't throw he simply stops or is taken aback he doesn't throw there and uh, the two batters run and cross as soon as they cross dead ball will be called and five penalty runs will be awarded to the uh, bat uh, fielding side Award any other five run penalties and return the batters to their original end because runs are not being allowed. This will be the same thing as uh, disallowing all runs. And therefore, five penalties are the any other five penalties except 28.3. Except 28.3. In this case, the batting side will not have any chance to uh, take runs at all, any kind of runs, except penalties, of course. Inform the batters, the captain of the fielding side, and as soon as practicable, the captain of the batting side, the reason for this action, and then make the report. Now, uh, if there is any confusion, just let me repeat. The situation is that the bowler is on his run-up, and the two batsmen actually run between wickets. He doesn't throw. If As soon as they cross that ball and award five runs to the fielding side. That's one. Now, let us take the option of suppose he throws. Suppose he throws at the non striker, non striker's end, he is allowed to do it. You will not say no ball, you will not say dead ball, nothing. You will say on the run up he throws, you will allow it to happen. And suppose it misses, suppose it misses, uh, you will call dead ball. But now I told you there it is no longer there in the law. I will be suggesting to the MCC by sub, yes, so law me to dalo. 38.3 says, uh, 38.3 says if there is an appeal. When the ball hasn't hit the sum, there will be no appeal. But the original law said that he will be given one opportunity to run out the non-striker. If that fails, or if you say not out, the ball is dead. You have to call dead ball. The umpire has to call dead ball. That was in the law. Presently, it has been removed. It has to be reinstated if you want that to happen. Okay, but we'll take it that we have to do it. But suppose the bowler throws at the striker's wicket. These two are running. He throws at the striker's wicket. Suppose the bowler, uh, they are not even running between wickets. He is standing outside the crease, about two feet outside the crease, and the bowler decides uh, uh, to throw the ball at the striker's wicket. Dead ball. In both situations, if he throws at the striker's wicket, if he throws at that end, it is dead ball. If he throws at this end, you will allow the run out to happen. And no, no ball. One attempt will be allowed. Again, I say one attempt. Uh, the law requires a change, but you take it from me, it is one attempt. Though the, I don't agree with what the clarification they have to put this back and reinstate this in the law, which is, is sensible. And it has been the thing for years. By mistake, they remove that particular clause that he will be allowed one unsuccessful attempt. Therefore, the bowler missing the non striker's wicket is one attempt, dead ball. The answer that IPL it should have been like that you made one attempt, therefore, dead ball. Nothing to do with the popping crease. That is how it should have been. But the MCC has to put it in the law. But anyway, all throws to the striker's wicket as per this law, uh, law uh, 20, dead ball. Let me take you to that law. The bowler throws the ball towards the striker's end before entering his delivery stride. There can be two situations when he will do it or is likely to do it. The striker and the non-striker are deliberately taking a run, what we were discussing. That is one. The second is the striker is taking guard outside the crease. And this fellow gets it into his head that I will throw and the wicketkeeper will run him out. And he throws. In both cases, 
the law says dead ball. We don't want all those jamela also. What happens if he hits the ball, whether runs are there, suppose it must, whether buys will be given and all. We don't want all that. Here to before, whatever was the law, now if he throws uh, in his run up, if he throws at the striker's wicket, in both cases it is dead ball. But he is free to throw at the non striker wicket. Once he misses, dead ball. Again, I will repeat, MCC has to put that back in the law. Till 2017, first edition it was there. In the second and third edition, they removed it and has created that problem. Okay? They have to repair that particular thing. All right? Okay, now, uh, are we clear about these laws that we discussed? There is one more law remaining in uh, uh, 20, uh, in law 41. Are we all right? Anything I need to clarify about any of these laws that uh, I have just discussed? Any point there? Yes? Then uh, shall I go on to the next law then? This next law is the law governing penalty runs. Uh, when penalty runs are awarded to either side, when the ball is dead, the umpire shall signal penalty runs to the scorer. Always signals to the scorers are when the ball is dead. Okay. Now, read the highlighted portion only. Penalty run shall be awarded in each case where the laws require the award. A fault has been done. There is no excusing the fault. I have to avoid award fire runs penalty, batting side or fielding side. Batting side or fielding side. Even if the result has already been achieved, no matter, you go in, award the fire run penalty, and if necessary, the result can also be changed. If the result is changed, in that case, uh, the law result provides that win by penalty run. That is also provided for. That is, suppose some a side has won, and then by award of penalty run, that side is now winning. So, the statement of the result is by win by penalty run. They, the law provides that also because now the law recognizes that even if the result has been achieved, you have to under all circumstances give. Remove this and read the highlighted portion only which says penalty run shall be awarded in each case where the laws require the award. You have no option. You have to give penalty run. Whatever may be the outcome of the match, you don't care. And then make the report. And this law says that note, however, the restrictions uh, on the in the following on awarding of penalty run. All of these uh, restrictions you will see they apply to 28.3 because no other penalty runs can be done away with. 28.3 will always be gone if there are situations like leg like by deliberate leg like padding, hit the ball twice, and all that. Uh, restriction on runner and uh, ball hitting the i mean ball hitting the helmet of course that also itself is uh, one so these are the laws which say 28.3 will not be given they are just drawing our attention to that okay uh, they say for technical reasons uh, they they have said that it will be always penalty extra it will be in addition to all other penalties no ball like by it will be in addition five penalty for a technical reason they are saying that they are awarded when the ball is dead and shall not be regarded as runs scored from either the immediately preceding delivery or the immediately following delivery. There must be some technical reason for them to say this. I am myself not clear why they are saying this. What is the hitch for the ball, the five penalty runs to be regarded with that particular delivery where the incident has happened? But the law says. Uh, even if the incident, the ball has been uh, touched by a fielder, uh, illegal fielding, the law of penalty says it was. It happened in that delivery, but the law of penalty says that it is not to be regarded as uh, with that coming from a result of that ball. There must be a technical reason for it. I'm not, frankly, it is not clear to me. Okay, what they mean to achieve by doing this, but they have a situation in mind. So, immediately preceding delivery, it will not be attached to that or the immediately following delivery and shall be in addition to any runs from those deliveries. In addition to any runs. 
even if a boundary is scored or any runs are scored uh, this law also indicates that boundary and penalty will can go together i have showed you two other laws where boundary and penalty can go together scoring of a boundary does not cancel the penalty or scoring of a penalty doesn't cancel the boundary so this also tells you this shall be in addition to any runs from scored from those deliveries any runs scored from those deliveries and uh, uh, which also shall mean the boundary scored from that delivery doesn't matter if a boundary is scored the batter shall not change change uh, end solely by reason of the five run penalty if the, because it is an odd uh, number five runs doesn't mean that the non striker will come and strike the next ball is what they clarify uh, now when penalty five penalty runs are awarded to the fielding side they shall be added as penalty extras to that side total of runs in the most recently completed inning if the fielding side has not completed uh, an inning the five shall be added to the score in the next inning this only tells us how you penalty runs are to be scored now the side is batting so their uh, score book is open any runs to the batting side will go to their score book under penalty okay now if the fielding side has already fielded and uh, the fielding side has already uh, fielded one and five penalty runs in the next inning five penalty runs are given these five run penalty runs will be added to their last completed inning so even after completion five penalty runs are added the target score on the scoreboard will go up by five runs target score now will go up by five runs because in the scorebook the scorebook is kept open for this purpose in case there are five penalty runs but now suppose take the instance where i am batting i am fielding first i have not batted at all the match has just started and i am fielding first and the batting side has committed an offense for which a five run penalty is given to me my score book is not open there is no open score book for me in this case the law makers say that in such a case you will open the score book of the fielding side there uh, if whether hard copy or computer whether computers allow that to happen must be allowing that to happen because this has been there for a long time you will open the inning on the computer or on the score sheet score book physical score book uh, and there in the extras column you will put five penalty runs in the extras column as a result of this when this team comes into bat they will the scoreboard will show five for no loss as their opening score normally you will see zero for zero zero for zero upar zero niche zero but now you will see five for no wicket that is how the uh, the law covers that situation also that the score book has to be opened and the runs scored there and the runs scored there uh, now we finished with law 41 now anything that you people have with regard to law 41 please tell me i am here to answer your queries yes okay please tell me if there is anything that comes to mind are you guys open to having one more session uh, after this or you are already very tired one more session today or wednesday or thursday no uh, say tomorrow are you people open to that yes, i am sir. okay on thursday on thursday all right thursday. yeah kabir what about you shweta uh, shubda Robin, sir, sir, sir. Because I uh, on that day I would uh, want to tell you a story, sir, something that interesting that had happened, it. and also uh, yeah, maybe yeah, run sir, you sir, through sir. a PowerPoint presentation sir, sir, that I had made. So is it all right? Thursday we have another session. Are you okay with that? Yes, sir. Thursday is fine. Thursday is yes, fine. Sir. Thursday is fine. Uh, yes, Kabir. Sir. Yes, sir. So we will have one more session, and uh, here yes, we will. Uh, all right. 
and i'd like to run you through that powerpoint presentation also there might be some interesting information in that uh, i had prepared long years ago i updated it uh, let us see how you find it okay um, all right so we are having a session the last one on thursday all right we'll go on with law 42 and uh, now law 42 player conduct this is the red carding system that has been introduced by the law makers red red card where the person is also sent off now there are four levels of offenses level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 if you look at those offenses which are listed under each head the less serious ones are there in level 1 level 2 the more serious level 3 and level 4 now if you look at the pattern which is there now these are is not a difficult law to understand once you understand the pattern level 1 is one warning and fire on penalty level 2 is immediate fire on penalty level 3 is fire on penalty plus removal for 10 over removal of the particular offender for 10 over and level 4 offense is a very serious one where uh, the fellow is removed for the rest of the match from the the more serious that is how the, that is the kind of pattern that is followed and procedurally they are more or less the same we should be able to run through this quite uh, quickly though the law appears to be a little long now here remember that if either umpire considers that the conduct of the uh, conduct of a player at any time during the match is unacceptable unacceptable conduct uh, the umpire shall act upon any unacceptable conduct now the four levels are given they have given listed those and i suggest you might uh, you should carry these four things in your pocket it's not easy to remember and some of the offenses are pretty close to each other all right <clears throat> the umpire shall call and signal dead ball immediately if you see that there is an uh, unfair act this call may be delayed until the umpire is satisfied that it will not disadvantage the non offending side like i told you the ball is in the air we saw that there were four four such occasions and there are two in this law law 42 if the ball is in the air wait before calling dead ball let the uh, issue of the ball get the catch get settled <clears throat> and then you decide then you call dead ball <clears throat> so in that in this case you will not call dead ball immediately as they cross and make good their ground okay the umpire concerned shall report the matter to the other umpire and together they shall decide now this is a joint decision they will decide which level this man comes under which level if so they shall determine into which of the levels the conduct falls as set out in 42.2 to 42.5 you have 42.2 before you 42.3 42.4 42.5 the list of offenses before you i suggest you carry them okay put your heads together okay this will come under level 1 or level 2 as the case may be whichever now for each level if the offense is by a batter the umpire shall summon the opposing captain for the batter or his captain to the field i told you never leave the field call time and call it you maintain your position of superiority over the player call him uh, he has to be summoned the law word used is summoned like a judge would summon somebody all right he has to be summoned to the field and solely for this purpose of the purpose of this law the batsman or the wicket cannot if the uh, batsman at the wicket cannot act for the captain no delegation here the captain himself must be spoken to all right now for each level 1 to 4 if the offense is by a batter the umpire shall summon the offending uh, player captain to the field solely for this purpose now what have i done have i repeated this or what Oh, looks like I repeated this. Something wrong here. I'll check it. Okay, this is an addition for each level of one to four. If the offense is by a batter, the umpire will summon the. I'll check what this is. Uh, give me a second. Let me do it right away, so that I know I'm not missing anything. Forty-one point forty-two.
no i have missed something here all right so this is this is a repeat for each level playing time shall be counted from the call of time to the call of play excluding the intervals and suspensions if any all right now this is extraneous this is extraneous all right for each level 1 to 4 playing time shall be counted as lost from the call of time to the call of play excluding intervals and suspensions of play 2.8 the time for close of play on that day shall be extended by this length of time they are telling us that after having talked to the captain which will take some time the offense is registered and the man is punished but you still have to call him you still have to call him sound him out sound him out and uh, issue the warning to him you spend time over it in all cases the time will be adjusted on the same day that incident has occurred closing time of say 5 pm will be pushed up to 10 uh, 5 10 pm and if uh, if it so if it happens during the last hour of play closing time you will take forward and you will not deduct any over which is what the loss is then everything is balances out as the same you extended the time over also you make no changes there this is this applies even in law 16.2 the same principle here in 16.3 and here okay now level 1 offenses and action by the by umpire any of the following actions by a player shall constitute a level 1 offense if you have a look at this willfully mistreating any part of the cricket ground equipment or implement used in the match throwing his bat around or hitting the stumps and all that okay or banging the um, bat on the ground and all that showing dissent as an umpire's decision by word or action showing dissent rather mild dissent using language that in circumstances is obscene in the circumstances of scene offensive or insulting making an obscene gesture appealing excessively also is codified as a level 1 offense during our time all these offenses were not codified and actions against them were not codified we used to handle them all of these uh, nothing new here all of these uh, we have been handling now it has been codified and also the umpires are authorized to take action advancing towards the umpire in an aggressive manner when appealing we have had this very very often and it is the umpire's job to be strong and make sure that please please don't do it it is showing public dissent and i am authorized to take action against you authorized to in uh, the normal circumstances it would involve even sending off the player in bcci cricket Uh, but here the offense is a fire and penalty here any other misconduct the nature of which in the opinion of umpire is equivalent to a level 1 offense okay these are all level 1 offenses i suggest again that you have this list with you now whenever such an offense is committed the whether or not it is the first offense the umpire shall call time the umpire shall call time together the compass will in all cases you have to summon the fellows uh, uh, captain there to the ground that an offense at this level has occurred you will con- bring him here if the level and offense is the first offense you will give a first and uh, final warning remember this warning shall apply to for the remainder of the match if a level 1 offense has been committed in innings 1 it applies to innings 2 innings 3 innings 4 if a second offense is done uh, a level 1 offense is done it will be the second offense in the white a fire and penalty immediately so there is no clean slate at the end of the innings uh, my suggestion to you is that uh, as practicing umpires have a list with yourself always refresh it all the occasions where penalty is warning and all that are for the whole match or removal of a player is for the whole match bowler removal of bowler removal of player law 42 has one uh, there are other areas also where it is removal of the bowler have a list because these are the vagaries of the law which you might not remember when it comes to taking action and you simply cannot afford to be wrong about the action that you take so therefore nothing wrong in arming yourself with uh, small piece of paper and looking at it along with your colleague look just refresh your view yes this has happened a quick look at it that yes this is where this man had goes off for the whole match or the offense applies for the you might forget very easy to forget 
all right all these uh, two kid things teda meda cheez you must recall you always remember and these are the things i make a point to particularly point out to you these are very easily missed very easily missed now one of offending offending players captain that a level 1 offense by any member of his team can result in a fire run penalty run to the opposing team if the level 1 offense follows an offense at any level by that team the umpire shall award fire run penalty run now suppose uh, uh, previously previously some offense is done either 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 whichever the warning and after that he makes some fielder makes a level 1 offense then in that case that warning is gone it is immediately five penalty run you are already a criminal proven criminal now i am not going to give you a warning now so if there is already an offense recorded and you have taken action 1 2 3 4 if it is one it is a repeat so if it is 2 3 4 has happened 2 3 4 also has happened level 1 will no longer be given a warning it will be immediately a fire run penalty it gets escalated immediately it gets escalated immediately that is the meaning of this particular law if the level 1 offense follows an offense at any level by that particular team 2 3 4 if it is one repeat of one naturally we know that five is there but if it is uh, they have been guilty of 2 3 4 we have already acted now this team no longer will be given first and final warning immediately it will be awarded five penalty runs to the opposite team this is one principle that you must understand and naturally you will call play and restart play and then you will make a report for which there will be a report uh, and it will be acting action against the captain all right now these are level 2 offenses showing serious dissent at an umpire's decision by word or action uh, very aggravated uh, kind of behavior making inappropriate and deliberate physical contact with another player uh, throwing the ball at a player umpire or any person in an appropriate and dangerous manner nowadays uh, the authorities uh, have it in mind uh, got it into their mind that any throw at the striker should be viewed uh, seriously viewed under this particular law and action must be taken against him uh, they uh, even that uh, that thing of uh, john who is that uh ben stokes similar where uh, he threw violently so nowadays umpires are being instructed to follow that using language or gesture to another player umpire team official or spectator that in the circumstances obscene or seriously insulting nature uh, or any other misconduct the nature of it now all of these again maintain a list if you to decide that he falls under second level 2 offense a level 2 offense inappropriate or deliberate physical contact with another player can attract like uh, you are obstructed deliberately obstructed and very violently i showed you that sri lankan player fernandez who blocked uh, josh butler it was i think and threw him away he was really thrown off so is a fit case for consideration under this law fit case for consideration under this law it may even come under law the next one okay now the procedure is the same call time summon the offending team's captain and uh, award five penalty runs to the opposite team now it may be the fielder or the batter whichever can be acted against the umpire shall warn the offending that any future level one also here you tell him now after you have done a level two offense any future level one will also give you five penalty runs i am not giving you a, a friendly warning uh there in that case and again the procedure of reporting understand the principle the escalation has happened here in level 2 the warning is gone immediately a fire run penalty because of the greater seriousness of the offense then coming to level 3 either of the following actions by a player shall constitute constitute a level 3 offense intimidating an umpire by language or gesture very very threatening uh, tone threatening to assault a player or any other person except an umpire these things uh, will come under level 3 now level 3 attracts a 10 over send off 10 over send off we will discuss there are certain points here to discuss 
if such an offence is committed, the procedure is call time together they will uh, offending captain. And shall direct the captain to remove the offending player immediately from the field of play for a period in accordance with the following. We will just normally it is ten ten over is removed. But this time the law, the MCC law, nowhere provides uh, makes provision for limited over cricket. But in this case they have done it. Okay, let us see. In a match where innings are not limited to number of overs, multi-day cricket, no limited overs matches, the player should be suspended from the field of play for ten overs. Now, what happens when he is suspended in the middle of the over? What happens then? Then, in that case, his suspension will start from the next new over. Three, four balls will be added to his suspension. Ten over from the first ball. It is very, very. It is not necessary that the suspension may occur in the middle of the over, uh, in the and between two overs. If it happens between two overs, so all these eventualities are also covered by this particular law. Suppose you suspend a player for ten overs in the middle of the over, you will count his first over, the start of the next over, and then ten overs, and then ten overs. Any balls remaining in the over in progress at the time of suspension shall not count towards the over for which the player is suspended. All right. Now, in a match where innings are limited to the number of overs, the rule says one fifth of the number of overs allocated to the current uh, current innings at its commencement. Now, it is a 50 over match, like this is being played here. uh now it is a 50 over match if somebody is to be suspended in a match it started with 50 overs and later on got truncated to 30 overs the penalty will be 1/5 of 50 1/5 50 that is what this law says suppose the match uh, is suspended right from the beginning both sides are now playing or the second side or the first side or whatever is now playing a 30 over match it has started as a 30 over ball one it started as a 30 over match then it will be 1/5 of the of 30 1/5 of 30 that will be the uh, punishment 1/5 of 30 even if later on in the match is turned into a 20 over match it doesn't matter 30 is the penalty 30 1/5 of 30 that is what this law says all right uh, in calculating in calculating the length of the suspension a part over result it shall be considered as a whole over in this particular case if you make your calculation there is a part over you will consider it as a full over like for instance say uh, suppose it is 33 and 1/5 of 33 is how much what is 1/5 6 and some part 6 and one part then its penalty will be 7 Seven overs will be his penalty. Thirty-three overs was the inning start of innings, and uh, he suspended. He suspended for one fifth of the number of overs, which is uh, one fifth of thirty-three. Then in that case, it gives you uh, how many overs does it give you? Eight. Sorry, what is that? One fifth of thirty-three. One fifth of thirty-three. It gives you six and something odd. So you have to make it seven. so the law takes care of these eventualities also these different circumstances also that is what they have told you they have covered all the over in uh, it shall be considered whole over any balls remaining in the over in progress at the time shall not be considered to be suspended so you have to leave aside these balls the suspension will start from the next fresh over that which is started there so which is the same principle as as we saw up there okay now if the offending fielder is a play, uh, player is a fielder no substitute is to be allowed which so far has not been said was not stated if it is a fielder no substitute the offending fielder may return to the field of play after serving the and may bowl immediately very vital uh, here it will not go to penal time it will not go to penalty time if he comes immediately he can bowl immediately if he has got no suspension time 
uh, you cannot penalize him uh, you he sent him off no substitute and further you don't allow him to bowl that is not all right so this law you must remember if the bowler is suspended mid over then that over must be completed that goes without saying we have done it now if the suspended player player is a batter if the suspended player is a batter uh he can be either an out batter or a not out batter either a not out batter or a not out batter because depending on when he has done it suppose i have given him out and there he uh, charges a fielder uh, close in fielder who might have taken a dropped catch a grounded catch and he charges him and behaves badly now whatever the decision was out or not out he had no business to be acting in that way so i am suspending an out batsman so it can be an out batsman who gets suspended for 10 overs now 10 overs means uh, in terms of time it can be 30 minutes 35 minutes 40 overs whatever time it takes for that side to finish the 10 overs there is no time relation here just overs okay or it could be a batter who suspended who is yet not out who is yet not out he is suspended for 10 overs what happens in both these cases is what the law tells us i told you the law has and they have envisaged all situations and have come up with this law which is quite comprehensive now suppose we are talking about a not out batter and he shall be replaced by any any by another member of his team so he will immediately go out he will leave the field immediately i am suspending a not out batter he is taking strike or he is a non striker the non striker has behaved or the striker has behaved doesn't matter i have sent him off the field for 10 overs my signal is my signal is like this i wave my arm up and down like this and i say 10 that means he is suspended for 10 overs that is the signal in a 11 3 offense he has to go away immediately another batter has to come and take his place another batter has to come and take his place now this offending player may return to bat after having served his penalty suspension only at the fall of a wicket only of a fall, at the fall of a wicket now it so happens that uh, retirement of a batsman is not given here but i think that is a mistake which i have pointed out to the ncc that uh, only at a fall of wicket it is, should include retirement of a batter also but it is not there and for the timing it is not there uh, is it there in the law what law are we looking at 42 4235 here it is only at the fall of a wicket so um, i feel it should be retirement of a batter also or maybe uh, let's see now if no batter is available now it is also possible that there is no batter available it is a ninth wicket playing and i have suspended a batter there is no batter available so therefore he uh, he will be uh, retired not out he does not he cannot continue uh, the the innings is completed in that case the inning there is no batter to come delivery is to bowl no batter to come innings is completed suppose the offending player is unable to continue his innings for whatever reason like he had retired uh, earlier for injury he will be retired not out his not out will not be turned to out just like a retired uh, well, suppose a ball, batter has been hit on the head and retired he cannot resume his innings he is retired not out for the purpose of statistics and everything he is retired not out and suppose here he is the last man in and uh, there is no other batter to come this man uh, the innings is treated as completed now what happens if the offending batter is a dismissed member of the batting side you need to i suggest after we finish uh, you can go through my uh, uh, session uh, recording and have the law also in front of you think about the law get it sorted out if the offending player is a dismissed member of the batting side suppose he is out like give you the situation he is out i gave him out and he has misbehaved with the fielder <clears throat> sort of hit him and all that uh, 
the period of suspension will commence at the start of his next inning. He is out. Now, when he either comes into bat again or he comes as a fielder, 10 over suspension is to be given. He is out. As it is, he would have gone and sat outside. That means he would have escaped the suspension. He is not allowed to escape the suspension. He will have to serve the suspension. Suppose his team is asked to follow on. Then 10 overs, he has to bear the penalty there. And suppose uh, he is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Uh, one second, I somehow missed my this thing, line of thought. Next thing, or suppose he is now the fielding side. After his side is out, he comes back to field. He will suffer the 10 overs penalty there as a fielder. So he will have to, uh, his team will have to field with 10. Now he is a fielder and one uh, uh, will not be, uh, substitute player, substitute will not be allowed. Okay. And furthermore, the offending player may not act as a runner also for his team. Uh, I have suspended a player who is out. Normally, an out player gets to act as runner. But a suspended out player cannot act as a runner also. Cannot act as a runner also. Again, the procedure is, warn the offending team that future level 1 offense, already you have done level 3. So, that means you have qualified for fire and penalty even for a future uh, one run, uh, level one penalty. Any overs remaining to be served from a suspension shall be carried for the next and subsequent innings of the match. A part over at the end of the inning shall not count towards overs for which the bowler is suspended. Now, it so happens that uh, I have been suspended as a batter. My innings goes on to five overs. Now, as a fielder, I have to uh, spend five overs suspension. Five overs as a fielder, now I have to do. Or, or suppose it is uh, my innings last uh, four overs and two balls. So, I have served four overs, six overs I have to yet to uh, penalize. I have to suffer. So, remember that all of these situations are possible situations. Because it can all go, uh, the guy can be suspended in the middle of the over, the innings can end in the middle of the over, then what do you do about the number of overs? Full over will be counted as served, part over will go in unserved. So, suppose I have served, uh, my, after my suspension, my innings is declared after 4.2 overs. F that means I have served 4 overs and 6 overs I have to serve in the next innings. There is no escape from the suspension. Either again as a batter or again as a fielder, I am supposed to serve that penalty. Okay. Uh, and after this process, these are explanatory notes for this uh, offense. And after that, we come to the procedure. Award five penalty runs to the opposing team, uh, signal level three penalties and make a report. And make a report. Now, these are all explanatory notes uh, regarding a fire run penalty, uh, level 3 offense, where uh, different situations, what the umpire is supposed to do, what will count as penalty overs and what not. All that, those situations and the batter being out, who suspended being out or not out, it is easier when a fielder is suspended, there is no out and not out question. Um, out batter and a not out batter both will be treated differently. So that he doesn't escape from the penalty. So that he doesn't escape from the penalty. Uh, again, I might tell you that this might appear confusing, but if you see the pattern and you think about this a bit, you will see that uh, it is not all that difficult to apply. Except that, yes, you must uh, keep a list of those offenses. Now, the level 4 offenses threatening to assault an umpire making inappropriate and deliberate physical contact with an umpire, physically assaulting a player or any other person, or committing any other act of violence. So, these are all acts, acts of violence which are penalized, and the uh, end result is, he is suspended, remove the offending fielder, fielder immediately for the remainder of the match. Remove him immediately on the remainder of the match. Now, the procedure is, Call time if necessary. Again, summon the officing, uh, uh, the player's captain. Summon him onto the field of play. Talk to him. 
and you tell him there is nothing else to say that we have found him guilty of a level 4 offence you have to remove him on the, from the field of play the signal is yes up and down the arm goes and i say one in front of my chest one this is out but here it says that he is out for uh, the remainder of the match now again there are different situations <clears throat> suppose it is a fielder no substitute will be allowed to him now he is supposed to bat again he is supposed to bat again how are you going to record his innings retired out if he is supposed to bat again in next innings retired out he is gone out of the match the scorer will write down retired out suspended for the match go home and you are retired out for the match suppose he is suspended mid over and that over must be completed different over we know it now if the batter is the offending player he will be recorded out in the current innings unless he has suspended and all subsequent innings if i am suspending a batter for the remainder of the match present innings will be retired out and all subsequent innings will be also retired out he can't come back just like a not out batter level 3 uh, offense he can come back after 10 overs here there is no question of his coming back he's gone for good retired out he will go if he is not out and in the subsequent innings also it will be retired out so it doesn't matter at all whether he is out or not out it is all always retired out okay uh if no further is batter available to bat the innings is completed we know that principle at all uh, of course and future level 1 offense after doing a level 4 offense don't expect me to give you a warning for any level 1 offense also i will immediately give you a fire run penalty this principle is followed throughout award fire run penalty to the opposing team uh, level 4 call play and then report so here you will see again they have uh, discussed here some rules whether it is a batter or not whether it is a fielder who has been suspended what happens with a batter who is suspended he, they have innings after that in the next inning following they are supposed to bat what to do about that that rule is very plain retired not out i mean retired out for statistical purposes also retired out it will affect his statistics over a longer period of time okay now there are some there are some rules here uh, now we are finished with level 1 to uh, 4 to 5 level 1 to 3 4 we are finished with that uh, and uh, you will see that there is a pattern there is an incremental uh, level of penalty one warning fire run penalty then immediate fire run penalty then 10 over suspension and then uh, full suspension for the rest of the match it is incremental depending on the seriousness <coughs> the level of <coughs> the offense and also that they have made some rules where certain situations are also covered some odd situations are covered you will readily understand them read over them i am sure uh, you it will you can grasp them there is, shouldn't be a problem at all <clears throat> in the first reading it might appear to be confusing it really is not once you grasp what the law really wants you to say <clears throat> similarly now suppose it so happens that a captain refuses to uh, remove a player from the field of play if one captain has uh, been directed to remove his player he refuses immediately you have to threaten him with awarding of the match as per 16.3 and if he does not remove it you will award the match to the other side he has to obey your instructions not obeying your instructions is uh, refusal to play he has to obey your instruction there are no two ways about it okay now it it might so happen that if there is a situation <clears throat> where you the two umpires have found in a in an altercation between two players you have found that both are uh, guilty and deserving of punishment and you have directed both captains to send their respective players off you feel that in this offense uh, both are culpable and both deserve being sent off either for the rest of the match or for 10 overs 
you the two umpires have told the two captains remove them both of them refused to remove both of them refused to remove their players respective players the law tells you in such a situation you are not to continue the match you are not to continue the match you are to stop the match there tell the player shall instruct the players to leave the field and then you will record the match as a draw as a no result under law 16 if you remember i showed you in law 16 uh, i don't know if we discussed this at all but in law 16 uh, if you recall i had told you that uh, not law 16 it is law 28 law 12.9 the law makers have added an additional method of <coughs> draw have recorded an additional method of draw under this particular law it is in result conclusion of the match and result it is in the law result what is that uh, law what am i doing the innings the follow on declare the result if you recall i had told you that under this law a draw a new situation has been added from with effects from 14 2010 under under uh, the third edition another draw situation so this is also a draw the law maker say you will send the players off you are not to continue the match at all uh, there is no way you are going to play the match further call then send the players off record the match as a draw and make your report okay all right now there are some additional points that you must uh, in a level 3 and level 4 offenses level 3 and level 4 uh, suppose there is a wicket keeper commits a level 3 or level 4 offense and you know that the substitute law tells us that uh, with the permission of the umpires a substitute can keep wicket now when the wicket keeper is sent off no substitute is allowed for him but suppose there is a substitute on the field of play and the captain says let this man keep wickets i don't have anybody else i the umpires are instructed the fielding side loses that right also of a substitute keeping wickets the fielding side loses that right also that you will not give this permission for the substitute to to lose wickets the offending wicket keeper has been sent off for 10 overs they have another substitute they are fielding with 10 as it is and they have got another fielder who is a substitute no okay, ask i will not give you permission for uh, using him as a wicket keeper the law bars me from doing so law bars me from doing so so that 24 12 substitute fielder shall not apply okay uh, nominated player may with a substitute will suffer a penalty for any level 3 or level 4 now they have, they are looking at some situation where as you very well know uh, there is a nominated player who has a substitute or a runner on the field of player a nominated player has a substitute on the field of player and the substitute causes makes an offense the original player will be suspended and this fielder is also suspended substitute fielder is also suspended the original player will bear the penalty that uh, his substitute has made the offense but he has to bear the penalty that suspension will, he was injured he was uh, sitting outside he was injured he was sitting outside you are given him a substitute but this substitute uh, misbehaved and is guilty of a level 3 or level 4 level 3 offense then he has to suffer that penalty he has to suffer that penalty which is defined and substitute will each suffer the penalty defined in these laws as appropriate now only the substitute will be reported and the captain will be reported for further action the innocent player who was sitting inside though he suffers the penalty he will not be reported so here you see the captain will also be reported because in keeping with the our uh, general principle that captain is always to be held responsible 
the substitute player who has made the offense and the captain who is responsible for uh, maintaining discipline will both be acted against that innocent player who was in no way con uh, connected with this offense suffered the 10 run penalty 10 over penalty but he will not suffer further penalty or censure after that okay now suppose a runner commits the offense the batter and the runner will each suffer the penalty defined under the law i am a batter i have taken a runner so while i am on the field of play my runner misbehaves and i me and the runner will both get sent off i was the innocent party but i have to still my the master will bear the consequences of the uh, actions of the servant okay the penalty for level 4 offense will apply to the runner for the remainder of the match but only in the current innings to the batter for uh, whom the runner has acted they say that level 4 penalty will apply for the remainder of the match to that offending player runner now the runner remember is a nominated player he is gone out of the match and for the batter the innocent batter the penalty will apply only for the current innings he will be off for the current innings and he can come back and participate in the next innings this is what the law says so they have uh, and only the runner and the captain will be reported so the law have taken care of the different possible situations in a penalty situation the different penalties is they have taken care of all of that and they have made the rules again uh going through the rules once again i suggest with a clear mind you go over these rules and its provisions you will see that there is a pattern to it and a lot of these additional rules are very clearly uh, are common sense rules are common sense rules and you will appreciate that all of these rules can be easily followed the difficulty is or remembering them at the appropriate time Uh, uh, what because there are some intricate thing how many overs penalty you should be giving how many overs uh, he has served deemed to be as served or what is the penalty to be given suppose he is an out batter suppose he is a not out batter now there are intricate laws but if you really study them i don't think there should be an, uh, any problem with these now you can ask me questions about these uh, laws uh, tomorrow if you wish uh, on thursday i'll be there to answer them there is no problem at all with uh, that okay so many they have uh, covered different situation. basic laws are there but to cover other uh, situation now there is one more situation which i might tell you that suppose uh, this man has got a player who has been sent off the field of play a fielder who has been sent off the field of play has already got penalty time against his name has already got penalty time against his name law 24 he has got penalty time against his name suppose after the suspension he does not come in if you remember the law 24 when i mentioned it if he does not come in this penalty this suspension period will get added to his penalty time will get added to his penalty time or if a substitute has done it in both these cases penalty time is added suppose he is, uh, his substitute has made the offense these two laws are there in law 24 right at the end uh, where he substituted made the offense and this man was injured and he was inside and substitute there are 10 overs penalties there now if after 10 overs the original player does not come in those that period of suspension which may be i told you 30 minutes 35 minutes 40 minutes or whatever will get added to his suspension time is a penalty time that rule also you must not forget that law also you must not forget so if if you see in law 24.2 it is there we had briefly uh, gone over it and here is the uh, full explanation of that law we i had made mention of this i had made mention of this here 24.2.9 both these situation the player himself level 3 offense under law 42 is done by a substitute the fielder himself here 